Home Ownership versus Renting. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from the ABC discussing well, the differences in quality of life and outcomes for people who own homes as opposed to people who rent homes, particularly in older Australians. Now, I think this is an interesting piece, an interesting piece, because we have seen, we have seen a tremendous, well, issue with, shall we say, housing affordability. And this data is up until 2012, that's the ratio of price to income. Look what it was back in the 70s and 80s, guys. It's going a lot worse now. Houses have really shot up. Here's our price, property prices. And it's in line with a large demographic. You know, the boomers move along. So that's, I question if this is replicable in the future. Maybe we need a whole generation of young people to invest in aged care homes. Let me know your favorite aged care stock tips in the comments below, guys. So let's, let's have a look at this piece. Older Australians who own their own home are more than 20 times better off than those who rent. Data shows. Exclusive Australian Bureau of Statistics data has revealed the staggering difference in wealth of older Australians in owner-occupied households compared to those who rent. Now, can we draw the conclusion this is simply because they've bought their home and they've increased the wealth from it? Or perhaps the fact that they've got a home has shown or they've managed to buy a home has shown they've probably been better with their finances or maybe they've had a higher income ratio through previous times in their lives. So that's why they're better off. In 2017, 2018, the ABS found that property owning households where at least one of the occupants was 65 and over had a median net worth of $960,000. Similar households that were still paying off a mortgage had a median net worth of $934,900. In stark contrast, the median net worth of similar households that rent was just $40,000. Well, all that tells us, well, I would, I would hazard a guess that this is because of the housing bubble that we've had for the last, what, how many years? Sure, housing has dipped down, but it's still, still incredibly expensive with regards to wages, particularly since, you know, wage growth is pathetic, guys. So, people who are not in the housing market will find it more difficult over time, ANZ economist Felicity Emmett told 7.30. I think we will see a situation where wealth inequality and particularly intergenerational inequality rises. I think we're starting to see that now. I think we're just seeing that also with the quality of life. These days, a couple both need to work, pretty much, just to even has it a chance of getting into the housing market and raising a family. Back in the day, you know, back in the day, they didn't. That's the difference. I would say that's a, a level of inequality right there. Regardless of wealth, it's just the freedom that they would have had to make that choice. Nikki Hutley, partner of Deloitte Access Economics, believes Australia is in a dangerous, oh, sorry, in a danger of creating a separate class of Australians who will not reap the benefits that come with home ownership. I think we're already at that point. I think we're already at that point. You've got a whole generation that are struggling to even enter into the housing market because it's just been inflated. And part of the reason is so much of our wealth has been pushed into that sector. 57% of the nation's wealth has gone into that. I, I I know I show these things a lot, guys. I'll bring up the Observatory of Trading Economics. I know I show this a lot, everyone, but for some people, this may be the first time they encounter this concept, that the complexity of our economy is so low. Look at what we're exporting. Iron ore, coal, petroleum, gold. Look at what we're importing. We've got a very primitive economy. We're 59th in the world. Australia isn't an advanced technological economy. Most of our stuff is exporting natural resources. And then we've got a huge, yeah, most of that's going to China. And we've also got a huge tourism industry that's dependent on China. And we've got, yeah, 
foreign investment that propped up our housing back in 2014 to 17 as well a huge amount of foreign investment there that black line on that chart is the proportion of building approvals that are funded by foreign investors see that number there that hundred percent there it's nearly touching it isn't it that ain't good that's going to overheat overheat a sector are we allowing one class of Australians to build for their retirement more easily than another class of Australians the answer to this is an unequivocal yes, she said. Well, we've got so much intervention in the economy. A big chunk of your money is taken out in super. Stuck there in super. I've got this super money I can't even touch. I would love to have just taken that and put it off my house mortgage. Paid off a big chunk of my house or bought a house earlier, a few years earlier, when we were saving for a deposit. But no, the state insists I have to have that sitting there. Either with a fund or I could set it self-managed. And that's probably going to be my goal this year, but that's aside from the topic. How many people, how many of these people with $40,000 net worth have got nothing in their super? Who could have used that money, maybe 20, 30 grand they squirreled away in there, or maybe that's the 40 grand they squirreled away in there, as a deposit on a house. Instead of paying all the rent, could have used that. A house may not be the best investment that one can make, but there's an element of security with it, particularly if it's your home, even if it will fall down. If you're going to live in it, does it oh, the value of it fall down? If you're going to live in it, does it really matter that much? You need somewhere to live. There's stability there. Miss Hutley has warned that Australia is in the grip of a housing affordability crisis that will lock a growing number of people out of the property market. Analysts provided, analysis provided to 7.30 by the RBA confirms the rate of home ownership fell among every age group between 2011 and 2016. I mean, there we go. We're heading down. We're heading down. When house prices are going strong, you see a big drop off in the number of people moving, it, moving into home ownership. Melbourne University professor Roger Wilkins said, saving a 20% deposit for a home in any Australian capital city now takes nine years for a typical household, while a median price property in Sydney now costs more than eight times the average household income according to CoreLogic. Just think about that, guys. Think about that. Think about that in the comparing. This is the problem where we need to release more land. We need to just open more up. We need to make it easier to build. But then we don't also want to overheat the market. What's going on? What's going on? How can we deal with it? One, one argument I would say is we need to make it. We need to remove some of the onerous requirements on housing. I mean, I live in a house that has doesn't need these, you know, you need to have these houses that shut the air conditioning off if you shut the doors, have all the insulation everywhere, all these environmental things that will take 50 to 100 years to pay off the cost of installing and all of that stuff add cost to it. You need to get energy reports, you need to get this report, you need to get that report, all these things add cost to housing. They add cost to housing, guys. Then we've got stamp duty, a government tax on housing, which... If you want to make it affordable, just abolish all stamp duty right there. There's an idea. Could the states do it? Could they hand out their candy to their voters? They'll slap you with one hand, steal your money off you, and then say you need to be thankful because we're giving you money here, or steal opportunities away from you, and then give you a paltry $10,000 homeowner's grant. Uh, people, Do people not see it? So this is despite the recent... Correction, whipping, wiping, almost whipping. Sound like Stewie from um, Family Guy. Uh, wiping almost 15% from the Sydney property values. Nationally, property prices are rising again. They're predicted to recoup their losses by May. What's happening now is real, but it's not sensible, Ms. Hartley said. We can't keep having house prices rising to these sorts of levels. We certainly have a housing affordability in crisis. We're likely to see fewer Australians owning their own home. The Grattan Institute's Household Finance Program Director, Brendan Coates, pointed to sharply declining rates of home ownership among younger Australians. The number of home owners aged 18 to 39 in Sydney and Melbourne has plummeted since 22, picking up only slightly during the recent downturn. In 2002, 34% of 18 to 39 year olds in Melbourne were homeowners. By 2018, the number dropped to 22%, according to to the Hilda survey. It's hard to see that there's anything other than worsening affordability that's driving the trend, Mr. Coates said. 
to crisis. Where over the course of the next couple of decades, we're likely to see fewer and fewer, particularly poorer Australians, owning their own home. And that will have an enormous consequence for all aspects of Australian life. Well, yes, I mean, our culture is going to change, guys. We're going to have people that are locked out of home ownership and locked out of that security, locked out of the ability to leverage that in their retirement. Hoping to achieve what their parents never could. In a typical year, Dominique and Trudy Harris earn about 120 grand between them. So that's not a small amount. That's not an amount to be scoffed about. 120 grand is decent money. They're hoping to achieve what their parents never could, buying a property that their eight-year-old son Liam can call home. But the odds are stuck, stacked against them. In the Queensland suburb of Newport, where they currently rent, it takes an average of 11 years to save a 20% deposit for a house. Okay, I I should know where that suburb is. I don't. Um, let's look it up. Newport. Where are we looking at? Morton Bay. Well, okay. Why are they? Um. Yeah. Okay. I don't play. You're living on the bay, guys. You're living on the bay. What do you expect? Okay. You want to. You want to buy a house cheap? Go to Cool uh, Kabulsha. Get it really cheap. Go maybe North Lakes. Go to North Lakes and buy a house. Why are you buying it in, right in Redcliffe? Uh, buy a cheaper one. Go in. Come on, come over here. Go over to Ipswich. Guys, you'll get one cheap. Go down to Logan. Logan here, you get stuff cheap. Even Brown's Plains. Guys. Yeah, this ring here. This ring here, you can get still of reasonable places. Around the 400k mark. Oh, it's, it's it, I get I I don't yeah. Do people not think of these things? I was watching a Monaco sixty four video the other night, and he was talking about you know the cost of one of his friends going over here to Australia. And it was a couple, and they were buying groceries and spending two hundred fifty pounds a week. And I'm just thinking, what kind of idiot spends the equivalent of that here in Australia? A couple. It just means they don't know how to shop. Number one, and they're wasting money on crap anyway anyway thinking it's another 11 years is going to save into this market is crazy well buy somewhere else buy somewhere else move there and live there don't live you can't afford to live there can you if it's taking you 11 years or cut costs you know the couple hopes to cut the deposit to 5% by being one of the 10,000 Australians to qualify for the federal government's new first home deposit scheme. It would be nice to get a hand up, not a hand out, Mr. Harris told 7.30. Yeah, well, I mean, it's your own bloody money, mate. They're stealing from you and giving back to you. It's not, you know, it's not really a hand out. It's, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all bullshit. It really is. They tax you to hell. I think having 5% is a lot more achievable than 20 Home deposit schemes won't have much impact, and it will not. Economists who spoke to 7.30 questioned whether the government's home deposit scheme would make housing affordable. I think the first home deposit scheme is another example of policy that sounds good, Groton Institute's Mr. Coates said. It ends up being a policy that really benefits vendors of the kinds of homes that are attractive to first home buyers, and that's exactly what we've seen with stamp duty concessions for first home buyers in Victoria and with first home buyer grants in the past. Deloitte Access Economics, Ms. Hutley likens the scheme to previously tried Band-Aid measures that have not made housing more affordable overall. What I'd see as the underlying situation for housing affordability is to build more houses in the places where people want to live. Well, yes. Yeah. Just open up more land, guys. Open up more land. Or maybe don't look at the Newport suburbs. You know, guys, maybe go to Caboolture. You'll definitely get something cheaper there for that. You won't have to wait as long. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, guys. Do you think this is going to be a sign of a changing Australia? Will there be a generation locked out from house ownership? Even if we get a correction, will they still be able to get in? Or will it be too hard just because our wage growth has been so bad? 
Let me know your thoughts and opinions below. Thank you all very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you're a fan and want to help us a little bit extra, we have a Patreon where you can make a monthly donation. You can also join the channel here on YouTube. We have affiliate links with Amazon, eBay, and Independent Reserve. We sell pocket squares at our website and PayPal to contribute that way. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.